Are you looking for ways to humanize your meetings? Are you looking for ways to show that you care so that people will care what you know? Well, today I have three action items that you can take that will hopefully help you in your meetings and even your remote meetings to be able to show this. Uh, but before I get to that though, I do wanna take a few seconds and thank everyone. We did reach 500 subscribers recently. I'm so thankful for everyone that's enjoying the channel and its content and the tools that I'm creating. I know they've helped me and I'm really sincerely glad they're helping you guys as well. And also it helps me to train myself to train others so that I don't forget. So thank you for helping help me. <laughs> um, but that being said, if you are interested, there are ways to support the channel and uh, below in the description. Uh, but besides that, I'm also currently looking for my next role in, in May of 2020. And if you see this video later, you can check out my status on LinkedIn to let you know if I'm looking not or not. Uh, but that being said, let's get started. So three action items to help you humanize your meetings. And uh, we call this the meeting check-in. It's the first five to 10 minutes in a weekly meeting. And I got this information from a meetup uh, by Joel Bennett. And he said he did this with his, his teams. And uh, he's an organizational uh, development guy. You can go check him out at organizationalwellness.com, uh, uh, him and his crew. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Joel, if you're watching this for your, your advice. And I hope uh, you enjoy this content as I hope to try to direct people uh, to you. So thank you so much uh, for your advice. That being said, we're gonna move on to the suggested use. As I said, this is supposed to be used in a weekly meeting, uh, hopefully under 10 people to make sure that you can uh, kind of fit the time box of it uh, as best you can. Uh, and a consistent, uh, meeting with a persistent team would probably be best for this. But again, you can use it in any meeting uh, as well. Uh, but these are the kind of where it probably will be most effective. Uh, if used correctly and with sincerity, it can produce psychological safety, a great way to care for the people that are making up your teams. Because of course, like I said before, people don't care what you know until they know that you care and uh, bring your teams closer together, provide further opportunities to grow, to help you cater your meetings to your team better and to save time by realizing that you may need to reschedule it. And this may sound uh, scary, but it's really just up to your choice, obviously. But these questions may shine light into the need earlier to reschedule is one of the things I thought of. So that being said, we'll move on. Uh, the first part of the check-in, is a scale from one to 10, it's the emotional check-in. And it goes from extremely emotional and beyond crying, like if someone's just had someone die, for instance, uh, to ecstatic and, and unremovable smile. And so what you do is you go around the room and you have people state the number that reflects their current state. And I found and kind of created this between some different stuff I found online. Uh, this didn't directly come from Joel. Uh, but it was along the same idea. Uh, but I created one that I thought that I would use in my meetings. And so, uh, but the bonus is why, why that number? And this is not something you're going to enforce, but allow people to, uh, to be able to expound upon if they say their number. And, you know, if someone's really emotional, it gives them an opportunity to share something in a group, because especially when we're remote, we don't necessarily have the opportunity to be able to, you know, uh, to bump shoulders, to be able to really uh, go over things with each other. Uh, so if someone had a death in the family, you know, it might get, it might come out in an email. It might just be something they hold in because they don't necessarily know a time to, uh, to bring it up uh, in front of the group. And so this is a way to, to make people feel more connected, to feel more cared about. And of course, people that care about each other's emotions are probably gonna be a better team. So uh, I'm willing to say they jump on that and say they will be a better team and uh, definitely increase psychological safety. Uh, but also whenever they do come out and say why, be ready with empathy to make that person feel safe and reassured assured and important. Because when we go, diff to we go through different things emotionally, it's really easy to feel like, um, especially when you're trying to get in this habit, to make people feel like they're uh, valued and that they're not going to be risking their job, you know, increasing that psychological safety by sharing what's going on in their lives. And um, just being able to be there for each other as humans is, uh, is huge. 
So again, this is just uh, something you can do very quickly and uh, something that may spur on conversations even after the meeting to show compassion. So uh, next is the presence check. It's a scale from one to 10. And of course, one is being completely absent and uh, a two says completely absent and not present in your, in your mindset to completely present and completely mindful. Present being you're here, mindful being you are aware of what's going on, you can probably sense the environment better, that kind of stuff. Um, but you can read the checklist there, or the, the list of one to 10. But also it's the same thing, go around the meeting room real quick and see a number that reflects your current state of mind. Maybe you haven't had your coffee yet, maybe the coffee machine's broken. <laughs> uh, maybe that's affecting your crew. Um, you never know, but this can also bring up some laughs and, uh, but also help you. And it's not something you can use to bash your team on. Oh, well, we're not present. No, it helps you give a norm for each other. Uh, so if someone is saying seven all the time or four, it may not be bad for them. It's just, um, what their average is. And, uh, it, you know, it's not something to brown beat people with. It's just a, a way for you to understand your team better. Uh, what's going, you know, what's going on in their life that's causing you to feel this? Again, that's the why from the previous question. So maybe there is a particular reason that they are, maybe they're usually a seven and now they're a four. And maybe their kid was up all last night crying and they just didn't get much sleep. So they're having a harder time than usual. So it might, this might be a good opportunity for you to know as the, whoever's leading or conducting or facilitating the meeting that you might need to repeat something or you might need to ask a question just to make sure everyone's clarified on something. Uh, but again, be ready with empathy to make that person feel reassured and important because, uh, you know, we're humans, guys. We're not always at 100% all the time. As much as we try to bring that to our job, uh, you know, we're humans. And that's one of the things that I like to, you know, make sure as a scrum master that, you know, these are human people are what bring agility. And so uh, they're the ones that help other people. And so if you can give in to them, if you can make them feel valued, if you can listen to them, this is a great tool, guys. And I just can't not thank Joel more for sharing this with me. Uh, also, this is something I've done in my past positions, and it didn't really ring to me how important it was until it was not there. Uh, but giving kudos or encouragement and, you know, go around the table, thank someone, build someone up. Uh, it's a good time to bring up food or donuts as thanks for, you know, if you're in an in-person meeting uh, for the team, if you are uh, trying to thank them for something they did or a great job. Uh, it's a good time to tell the team, obviously, it's a good job. They did a good job or that they, to set the example. Um, but ask the group if they want to lift someone up or encourage someone or give kudos, you know, really let the team build each other up on a consistent weekly basis. I mean, or even more consistent than that, you know, make it a, make it a culture. Um, but yeah, these are the things that I thought, you know, that Joel shared that I thought I really wanted to remember. I really wanted to stick with me and I want to make sure that I'm taking into my meetings and my next position to really make the, uh, any kind of weekly meeting we have more human and to make sure that I get a better beat on my teams and to understand them more and to show them that I care. If you like this video, make sure to smash that like button and tune in next time. I'm planning on creating a, a video. I'm just going to throw myself out there for TDD and uh, how to gamify it uh, as I learn to understand TDD more and to be able to help teams more. Uh, it was challenged to me recently. And so I'm um, hopefully that will be the next video and I'll be putting that up soon. But make sure that if you have not, you subscribe, make sure we hit that thousand mark, share this with your friends. And uh, together we'll hopefully build some awesome remote and in-person teams by uh, making sure that we care for one another by asking these questions. Thanks guys, I'll talk to you later. Keep on learning.